Hello, how are you everyone? In this video, I'm going to discuss with you what documents you need to complete first when you would like to apply or planning to apply for a Portugal Job Seeker Visa. A lot of people is actually confused what they should prepare first and what should they prepare last. And I'm going to give you a brief background on what to do first um, when you want to start to complete your documentation and requirements for Portugal Job Seeker Visa. All right. But before that, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and thank you for the views. And if you do have any questions about Portugal Job Seeker Visa, you can join the Facebook group that I created. It's a private group dedicated only for Portugal Job Seeker Visa. I'm going to answer your questions, just post your concerns and inquiries on the Facebook page. So basically, this is the general documentations and specific documents that you need to complete when you are or you want to apply or planning to apply for a Portugal Job Seeker Visa. So as you can see, um, you would not be able to see here the education certificates, the experience certificates, training certificates that I'm always mentioning in my previous video that it's not included here in, in the requirements from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but those documents will actually support your approval or will increase your approval rate when you attach those documents in your applications. And to be honest, if you send an email to the embassy or VFS, they would actually tell you to have those documents ready. All right. So what we're going to do in this video is we are going to dissect these requirements, what you need to do first, let's say your first priority to complete or to start working on, and what could be on the later part or later stage on the completing of documentation. And I'm going to explain to you why. Of course, when you are planning to apply for a job seeker visa, First, you need to be keen on identify your travel date and how you are going to do that. Of course, you need to know the processing and timeline of Portugal Job Seeker Visa in your country. Either you will have to submit that directly to the embassy or through VFS Global. Now, in some embassy, the processing time is around 30 to 60 days. And for the VFS Global, it's around 60 to 120 days it depends on the country it depends on the location and sometimes it depends on the nationality so this is the thing that you need to um to look into the processing timeline of the visa in your country and then um, you have to consider as well the of course the scheduling of booking and appointments but there are some countries that vfs global um you don't need to have an appointment. You could just go there, walk in, but not in all country, in some countries only, like in Jakarta. So it was confirmed that there's no need for an appointment. Just go there and submit the application and that's it. And of course, based on the timeline and based on the appointment booking that you have in the VFS Global or in the embassy, you can identify your desired travel date. So, for example, the processing and timeline in, in your country is 120 days. So, you cannot say that your travel date will be after two months. So, you can have a travel date maybe after six months or after seven months. And you will base all your applications based on that desired travel date that you need to put your mind into. Okay, so once you already identified your travel date and you are sure about the processing or timeline of the Portugal Job Seeker Visa in your country, now we are be um, we will be going to identify now the documentation. Of course, the number one priority is passport. So I put it in the number one priority because some people might not have their passport yet. So you need to apply for a passport, of course, or you need to renew your passport. I put it in the first priority because if you if this is your first time applying for a passport, you do not know any problem that you may encounter. For example, a problem in your birth certificate, 
um, there might be a problem in other documentation or other requirements. And in some countries, you need to provide a two valid government IDs to apply for a passport. And if you do not have those IDs yet, then you will have to apply for an ID first before you could apply for a passport. So that's the thing. And as, at the same time, if your passport is expired for a long time, there may, might be additional documentation. If you are a female and you are now married, so you will need to provide a marriage certificate, which you need to obtain from other government office. And sometimes it takes time because you'll need to have an appointment and there's no availability of the appointment. It depends on the location of the government office. Okay. At the same time, another thing, if your passport is lost, so there is a like clearing day before you applied for a new one or replacement passport. Then the other documents that is really first priority are the apostle documents. Education certificate, experience certificate, training certificate, criminal record certificate, and marriage certificate. So I put into the first priority because this document takes time to process. Like in some countries, before you obtain, for example, the crim criminal record certificate, you'll need to go to the, to the government or police station to obtain the certificate and they'll have to, you'll have to attest that in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Chamber of Commerce, and then after that, legalize in the embassy. In some countries that has no apostle, um, so it has to go through that process. So it's different from countries to country. Like here in the Philippines, um, the educational certificate, we have to go to our school. Then after that, once we get the certified true copy from our school, we'll have to go to Commission Higher Education. And again, wait for another, like, let's say a week. And then after that, that's the time we'll get the documents that we will bring to DFA for Apostle. So it's like we need to go to three government agencies just to have our education certificate apostled. For training and experience certificate here in the Philippines, we'll need to go to a lawyer to attest that the certificate and training, the experience and training certificate is original. Then after that, we'll have to go to the regional trial, trial court and then we'll bring it to the DFA to apostle the document. So again, it's three government agencies and for the criminal record certificate and a marriage certificate so for us it's like we need to go to two government agencies in other country it will be different if your country do not have or not a member of apostle um so you'll have to go to ministry of foreign affairs chamber of commerce and then if you are not a citizen a nationals of that country, you'll have to bring the documents to the embassy to have them attested that it's original and it's gone through all those authentication process. So this is similar to our friends in, in India. It's quite complicated as well to have their documents attested and as well as in our friends in, uh, in Africa. All right, so number one priority, guys, remember, have your apostle documents ready. And based on the process of the attestation or for the processing of the apostling your documents, you may also need to move your travel date or desired travel date. Because, for example, even though um, you set your mind to travel after six months, but for your documents to be attested or apostled, it will take you around eight months, so you'll need to change your travel date, okay? So once you completed your uh, first priority documents, you have all this in your hand. It's already apostled. You have your valid passport. Then we can go to the next stage, which is this document is very easy to obtain. And actually, you can do it even two days before the visa application or visa submission. But I just put here one week because I do not like to have this short timeline because as much as possible, you have to have all these documents with you complete one week before your appointment or one week before you submit the application. Why? Because at least you have time to check everything. You'll have to go through them again, check your statement. If the name is correct, maybe there, is, there are some mistakes in the information. 
check the national visa application form. Okay, so these are the documents. So number one is the own statement, letter of intent. So to be honest, this can be done in just like, like minutes, let's say 15 minutes. I created a video wherein there is a template wherein you can save the template and just edit the content and you can use that one. Next one is national visa application form. This is same, just a few minutes to complete. But you have to be very careful when you are writing your national visa application form. Your data must be correct and match all your requirements. For example, the name of the the name in your passport must be matched, the date of birth, the date of your travel must be consistent with your um travel uh travel date, insurance date, and uh, proof of accommodation, okay? And the next is criminal record inquiry. So criminal record certificate that I discussed in these slides um, is different from the criminal record inquiry. So basically, the, the criminal record certificate, this is the certificate of your criminal record or that you have no criminal record we're in the criminal record inquiry this is some kind of authorization that you need to fill in the form is in portuguese but i also have a video for this one that you can just edit and copy and paste it so um this is like an authorization wherein you are authorizing the government of portugal to conduct a verification of your criminal record certificate all right Okay, so next one is travel insurance. So you have to do this one week before because we don't know how fast your travel insurance is. So like for us, we use AXA. It only took us around just a day to receive our travel insurance because we paid online. But maybe in some insurance company, it may be different. So before you book your travel insurance with them, ask them how fast we can you can receive the the travel insurance certificate or travel insurance policy. And take note again, travel insurance must be Schengen compliant. Next is IEFP. IEFP is some kind of a training center um, in, in Portugal. So you have to complete this and this, is, this have a expiration date. So the expiration is, I think it's like three months. And it's very easy to, to do as well, like maximum 30 minutes. You'll create an account, you enroll yourself, and after a few minutes, you will receive the certificate in your email. Or let's say maximum 24 hours, you will receive the IEFP enrollment certificate in your email. So picture, it's also very easy, maximum one hour. You just go to photo studio, take a photo, and then you'll get that in an hour. Okay, so the next one, so this can be obtained three days before visa application submission. But again, check with the agency or the bank how fast they can do it for you. Because if the bank is like very slow, so you don't do it three days before, do it a week before. So flight reservation, so why three days before? Flight reservation basically expires. So most likely they're just valid for a week or two weeks, depends on your agency where you are going to get the flight reservation. So that's why you need a fresh one. Next is bank statement. Um, here in the Philippines, um, we could get it like in an hour or let's say within a day, depends on the bank and depends on the queuing in the bank. So um, you need bank statement and bank certificate fresh because they have to see that you requested the bank statement. Um, it's, it's a new statement. And then proof of accommodation. This is similar as the flight reservation because proof of accommodation, um, it has expiry. So you'll need, to be, you'll need to get a fresh one all the time. All right. So now in case that you already submitted your application and the embassy get back to you asking for additional documentation, please comply accordingly. Because the good thing about the Portugal Job Seeker Visa, they are not the kind of embassy that you submit the documents, it's lacking some documentation, they will reject it. They are not like that. They are very kind, to be honest. They will reply to you to submit other documentation to support your application. 
So for example, they feel that your bank statement is not account is not enough, they will send you an email asking for more information or additional requirements to support that. Some of the um, applicants receive an email asking for new new booking of the accommodation. So just comply accordingly and be respectful when you are replying to their email. So again, guys, if you haven't subscribed yet in my YouTube channel, please subscribe. And if you have any questions, please join the private Facebook group that I created dedicated to Portugal Job Seeker Visa. Okay, see you in Portugal. Good day.